so you should be filling this thing up with assembly directors. Okay, so we have we have nine. All right, nine out of four thousand. We're on our way. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, uh, the main goal is to get started uh, building our automated wiring section of our factory over there. Uh, but before we get started with that, um, I want to actually start also making some of the, the product that we need uh, just using our storage. Uh, we certainly can't make all of it that way, but we have all that stuff over there. We might as well put it to use. Uh, plus, I have a few really high-end um, components that I've just been hanging on to for this purpose. So I've already set up um, some machines over here for that. Uh, the assembler over here is set to actually make the automated assembler, uh, assembly director systems, rather. Um, and then this is set up to make adaptive control units. This is set up to make supercomputers. This is set up to make circuit boards. And then all of the other components um, we will provide from our storage. So again, this is only going to make a small percentage of what we all ultimately need, but we might as well, you know, put it to work for us. So we we have the product coming from uh, both the storage and you know from what we're going to build. And then you know when the storage starts to run roll uh, run low rather, uh, we'll shut that off and let it replenish and then wash rinse repeat. So the little setup there is kind of a semi-permanent setup so we're going to set this up a little neater than you know just running spaghetti lines okay so the first thing is that in this case here i've got um, some adaptive control units and uh in here i've got a bunch of supercomputers that we made previously so let's just start by here let me sort this we have 50 of those and 50 of those. What did that take again? Um, let's see, assembly director system. So it looks like it's a two to one ratio. Okay. Um, I'm gonna use utilize <clears throat> most of this stuff too. And I actually have a whole mess of automated wiring stored up from my testing of the automated wiring factory so we'll be using that too um let's go ahead and i i need this high uh, or rather these high speed connectors to make ammo so i don't i'm not going to use all of them but let's grab a few stacks of those as well and let's grab all of the automated wiring okay so we'll go over here and get started with the stuff that we can directly feed into the assembler for the director systems and then we'll get the other stuff going after that so what I'm gonna do here is set down uh, here let's put these this on set down a couple storage bins um, let's just put one here and one here and we'll put the adaptive control units in there and the supercomputers in there okay and then we'll just cut these belts here and run that in there the these vents here are temporary so i'm not super worried about making them look pretty uh, oh it looks like we need to run power to this assembler. Um, let's put that right there and then run that there. Okay, so this will start making these assembly director systems and putting them into the train station. Now what we want to do with the train is just have it deliver those to the space elevator. But you know what? Let's not actually start that until we get a, a fairly decent load uh, of those going. Just because I mean, not that it's a big deal right now. We've got we've got uh, plenty of power, but when you run the um, the trains, the locomotives, it does use extra power. So we got that going. 
Um, now, for making more adaptive control units, we're going to need automated wiring, circuit boards, heavy modulars, and computers. Okay, so let's do this. Again, this part will be temporary for the moment. Let's put this here, and we'll put the extra high-speed connectors in there that we're going to burn. Uh, no, wait a minute. You're the... Yeah, you're the one that needs the high-speed connectors. Okay. So let's do that the other way around. We'll put this here. Move forward one more. And let's see, you need... 14 of those per minute. So, um, what we could do is, yeah, let's just, let's just set this up here for the moment. And then we'll run this belt over to here. Go back to And we'll put the high-speed connectors in here. All right, I don't have enough AI limit spare AI limiters to feed in here, so we're gonna we're gonna have to make those. Which I think that's what this is for. Oh no, that one's for high speeds. All right, why don't we have this make? Oh no, this is for AIs, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna have to feed resources into that. Um, but we do have a few spare computers that we could also just temporarily feed in until they're used up, and then we'll hook up the computers from storage. All right, so let's just run this out here. Bring it around to here. And then I'll put um, all of the spare computers that I have in there. All right, now let's see, you you need the automated wiring. And all of those bins there are full of automated wiring. I told you I had a bunch. Because <laughs> when I set all that up, I actually let it run overnight to, you know, to check it in the morning to make sure that it it all um, leveled out, all the buffers filled up, which they did, and that was running really well. So that's why I have so many of these. Okay, so let's see here. For this, why don't we... Why don't we run a line... I want to keep th things off the ground. So let's go up to, and then we'll run this over to here. Let's run that over to there. And this actually needs to be a Mark III lift, too. I mean, it doesn't have to be, but we'll move it quickly. All right, and then this we will turn go right to here. And then... We'll run the line. Will it get all the way to there? We'll get all the way to there. Okay, that's fine. This is not a permanent setup. It's just a semi-permanent setup. But we still want it, want it to look halfway decent. Okay, and then we'll bring you to here.
All right, and let's see, you're the one that needs, among other things, automated wiring. And you're going to need computers as well. So I think what we'll do here is... I'm just trying to think how I'm going to run the other lines in here, too. Since we can run two on the bottom and one more across the top from storage, it would make sense then for this one to go into the third input. All right, so let's go bring that up one, two. Like so. And then we're going to want to have this go back to that way. And then you can go into there. And we have a bit of a power clipping problem. Um, why don't we run the power over this way instead? Whilst we're over here, let's grab those other extra computers that I had. There's no reason for me to be hanging on to spare computers over here because I've got a, a full bin of them in the storage. I just they were just left over from from before. Um, and actually, yeah, let's take all all of those supercomputers too. Well, we should probably hang on to a let's hang on to a few stacks of those just because you know, we're going to need them for building a few things coming up. Maybe I'll hold on to six stacks. The plan for the next episode, by the way, uh, well, as soon as we're, we're done building out the automated wiring anyway, is we're going to set up some nitrogen so that we can get that next milestone to get a Mark III miner. And my plan for doing that is I think we're going to use drones uh, just so we can try them out. I've never used them before. And uh, plus the fact that the nitrogen deposits way up on one of those you know, one of those uh, plateaus up there anyway, so it'd be kind of a pain to run a pipe down. So let, we'll try some drones out. Okay, so anyway, um, this way we're going to put the extra computers in, so let's do that. Then I'll provide those. And then we're going to run out of um, these things uh, far before these will run out but we'll keep feeding these in here manually until uh, until they run out and then we'll start making them uh, which is what this one's for okay so um, so you should be filling this thing up with assembly directors okay so we have we have nine all right nine out of four thousand we're on our way <laughs> uh, and you need, yeah, oh, hold on. Yeah, I don't, uh, wait a minute. What are you doing? No, we don't need to make supercomputers yet. We need, to, what we need to make uh, are adaptive control units. So let's feed those. Ah, shit, you're not gonna be in, going straight. Well, that's okay. Th this is te temporary. Um, I want those computers back for now. So we can put them in here. As you, you can see, I didn't really plan this out precisely. <laughs> uh, so we're kind of doing this on natural at the moment. Okay. So um, these extra... Uh, automated wiring, we're just going to throw in the storage over here. So we have automated wiring. We have temporary computers. Uh, we need circuit boards and heavy modular frames. Okay, so let's run those along these bottom two lines. Oh, 
Um, oh, okay. So now what we want to do is we want to put you in like so or this line. And then, <clears throat> you know what? I do need to run these into there so that I can run these into here. So again, this road's also going to be blocked, but we're not using it at the moment. If we need to use it later, we'll figure it out at that point in time. That's, yeah, I guess that's straight. All right, so this is making adaptive control units. We will just let it run um, until it uses up these computers, and then I'll run a line from the storage of computers over here to just take the place of, of these once those run out. Um, and then I guess for now... Those take a long time to make, don't they? Uh, why don't we do this? Why don't we overclock the shit out of this thing? Because why not? All right. Um, let's take and run you guys. Around the back and we'll just feed you in through the. Come out one more there. We'll just feed you in through the, uh, or into here and then th through there, uh, since we still have a few more in here. And then later I'll, I'll do a direct connection. Okay, so we have 16 of those so far. Now, um, I'm, I'm not going to hook up the supercomputer <clears throat> until we run out of the ones that we currently have, which are over here. And we got, I made quite a few of them. Um, but when these run out, then I'll hook up all the lines over here to get this going as well. When we run out of our high-speed connectors, then I'll get this set up to make the high-speed connectors and this all set up to run the AI limiters, which are needed to uh, make the supercomputers. Okay, so the rest of this I'll do off camera. You get the idea. Uh, I just wanted to show you, you know, what the semi-temporary setup is. Ah, for Pete's sake. You know what? I'm not going to worry about that. <laughs> um, and yeah, so we'll just, like I said, we'll use our own storage to uh, be making this stuff. And when the storage runs low, I'll just stop it, let the storage replenish, and then, you know, wash, rinse, repeat. But if this was the only way we were doing this, it would take 500,000 years to do, right? So we still need to, to build an actual automated production to make that stuff as well. Very good. Okay, I think we are ready to get started with the build now. I need to do a couple of inventory management things first. Um, and while I... Before I cut the camera to do that, uh, let's take a look and see what we got here. Rigor motor always pops up. I hate that one. Um, crystal beacon. Yeah. Uh, is that an actual part for something else or is it just an end product? I don't know. What's the, what's the normal recipe? I mean, the normal recipe is not a big deal. Oh, this item will likely be removed. Oh, that's right, because we can... It's only used as an ingredient in an alternative recipe, right? Okay, nah. Uh, not doing that. So, what about this, though? This requires radio control units and cooling systems. And it makes three per minute. What's the default recipe make? Default recipe makes 1.8 per minute and requires these four inputs. Okay. But. 
So that's okay. So that's four inputs to make that. But the radio control units take at least three inputs or four if I used this recipe. And the cooling systems take four. Yeah, I hmm. I don't know. What is that? Is that I see that oh well okay, that's nitrogen gas, which we are gonna hook up. But this does three per minute instead of one point eight per minute. But I'm pretty sure without I'm pretty sure that making these two things are is going to be more involved than making these four things. Well, I don't know though. That requires an assembler. That requires a manufacturer with four things. That requires a manufacturer with four inputs. That we already have. That supercomputer recipe might be decent. Uh, you know, because we get three per minute. Yeah, let's take it. I hope that wasn't a mistake, but we're going to do it. There's still a lot more hard drives out there that we can grab, too, so it's not like we're... That was our last chance, you know. All right, let me get some inventory management done, and then when I'm finished, I'll bring you guys back. We'll go over there, and we'll get started building our automated wiring setup. All right, guys, we have another hard drive ready. Um, alternate electrode aluminum scrap. So that takes in aluminum solution and petroleum coke. Um, and makes 300 per minute with seven water. Uh don't see the purpose of that unless we needed a way to get rid of petroleum coke because this does 360 per minute and takes normal coal produces less water though but <clears throat> well, which is actually a good thing because in this case water is a byproduct any a byproduct anyways so yeah let's see quick wire 27 or just regular cable uh, the default recipe only requires copper uh, wire. It does 30 per minute. This does less. Would require rubber and quick wire. So, eh, not a fan. And I don't know why in the hell I would make steel. Well, actually, because right now we're using plastic, and plastic is actually more difficult to make than steel. Um... But well, we make 60 per minute, though, with that. Plus, I guess we have a whole bunch of alternate recipes, too. Some of these involved, un uh, well, all of the rest of them involve unpacking. Yeah, uh, none of these really seem all that great. I think we're going to re-roll. Okay, we are ready to get started here. So let's head on over to our new build site. And we'll get started with our automated wire assembly line. So, I have blueprints for all of this. So theoretically, this should go reasonably quick, theoretically. So let's grab um, a line here and just bring it to the corner and these lines will probably not stay here. They're just there right now. There's our train. Look at that. Uh, so I can hover. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Actually, you know what? Let's... Let's bring this back a little further and bring one out to about there too. Okay. 
So first thing we want to do is we want to remove that and I don't think it's going to let me let's go into our director assembly uh, we want this one first I don't think it'll let me blueprint mode onto that platform so what we're going to have to do for the first piece is just put some walls down temporarily so we have something to butt it up against but then once we get the first one in place the other ones should snap in uh, quite easily uh, let's also do this let's go to our let's go to our fifth toolbar and let's put these guys on the toolbars for the moment and we'll switch them up later that way we can just quickly switch to them. All right. Uh, oh. We're missing stuff. Uh, looks like we're missing silica. Should have some of that in one of these bins. Because this is all the stuff left over from when I broke them back down. Yeah. Uh, we're, let's grab some more cable too. Um, maybe a little more of this cable. few more pipes. Okay, that should be enough. Very good. Okay, so this is the corner piece. And is that the right? No, that's down too far. Okay, that's the right height. We just need to nudge it over one to the right. And I think we're good. So we're going to set up 12 assemblers to make the automated wiring itself. And this was the piece that goes on the corner because I got the rails and we also have the um, output right here of the whole chain, which will go to the manufacturer. Okay. For now, I think, too, what we'll do is we'll just let's put that storage bin there. And I want to run... to that cable there. <clears throat> okay. So this is only one of four inputs for the manufacturer. So what we'll do is we'll, uh, oh, I'm on the wrong toolbar. We'll just run everything into a, a, a storage bin temporarily until we can. Well, once I get it actually set up and running, I'll probably just turn it off until the other stuff is ready. So let's just bring this down to here. And I think that's the right level. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, so that's the first piece. We need to put the um, end caps on here because the blueprint designer... What the hell is that at an angle? That is weird. Uh, the blueprint designer wouldn't let me put them on, so I have to add these after the fact. But, as you can see, I set up little wiring racks and hid a lot of the wiring inside so everything looks nice and neat there very good let's move to the next next one um all right so what we're going to do is we're going to remove this next piece and then we're going to go to here and we're going to grab 
Uh, let's see. We want the... One B oh, automated wire assembler inline, I believe. So let's move this over to here. And then we actually have two of these now, so we'll remove one of them. And we'll. Hook that wire up to there. Those three lights come on, so we know we're good on power. Let's move that over to there. Uh, no. Let's see. Let's move it to here. Because we got to take this piece out anyway. But now we got to make a couple connections down here. Okay, so we need to run a Mark III line into here. And as you can see, I have signs up, so to help me remember what goes where. And the input for the cable will start here, and that has to be a Mark IV. Okay. And I think that's the only connections we have to do down here for this next piece. Looks correct. Okay, now what we need is the 1BAW assembler inline blueprint. And we'll lock that in place, nudge it over. that extra pull, run the cable, good. Now we need to make a connection down here. We need to connect the stator line into here and if I don't if I didn't specify like mark 2 mark 3 then it just meant uh, you know that all we need for that is mark 1 okay that's the end of the line this will be the start of the second line for the cable because we we're, we're going to be pushing a lot of cable through here so I split it up um, we also need to connect the output line for the automated wiring itself there, and I forgot to do that over here. So I'm sure there's going to be a few things like that I'm going to forget as we go along, but we'll figure it out eventually. Okay, good. So that gives us nine, so the final automated wiring machines are going to be uh let's see there should be a c, yeah one c is the one i want because this is the last one for automated wiring okay lock that in place nudge it over remove that connect the power And then go underneath and make our connections. You go into there. You go into there. And... Uh-oh. I did something wrong here.
Okay, so... We have... The input for the mark uh for the cable so we have one mark three two mark three three mark three and then a mark two and a mark one um i think i may have made a mistake here Well, I think actually the only thing we need to do is just change these belts. No, 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 no. This is the end piece. So this section here is wrong. Let's just redo the whole fucking thing. I think we want the a uh, the A W B here. Let me look in the actual blueprint menu because I did put descriptions on these. Okay, this is second of two cable feed sections in line. This is the first of two cable. Yeah, so I actually need the, the one AW here. I think that's what we need. So lock that. Okay. Yeah, this is this is correct. Cuz now we have now we have the start of the new line and we just need to connect the mark 3 into here. And this is the end cuz it wraps around here and it should say end right here. End of line. Okay, good. I just used the wrong piece there is all. Okay. That goes into there and that goes into there. And this needs to go into here. This one into here. And uh, we don't need to hook this one up. And that should do it for the automated wiring machines. Very good. Okay, now we're going to come all the way over here. And we're going to hook up our three stator machines. So let's remove that. Okay, stator assembler left. And it doesn't look like I have the right one on the toolbar, but if we just hold down E, or wait. Yeah, okay, we have to go into the menu. I didn't get that one on the toolbar. So we want stator assembler right, which is this one. Okay. Uh, we're missing steel beams. Okay. Stator assembler right. Should go there. Punch it over. Do the power. And do the connections. So that's an input. We need to connect the stators, though, to the... Uh, 
Uh, here. Yeah. Wait. Out to automated wire. Uh, start. A, hold on. Out to, to automated wiring. Start of line. Right. Okay. So we got to curve it around to go into there. Just took me a second to remember what I did. Okay. So let's grab you. And we want to run you. Let's see. You're right lined up with that signpost. Go back to... Nope, I didn't do that one quite right. Um, we need to come over one more, I think. What the hell? <laughs> Why do those things happen? There we go. Okay, that looks nice and straight. And that feeds the stators then into the automated wiring uh, machines, right? Yeah, okay, that looks correct. And all that can be Mark three or Mark one because it's not ever going to exceed 60 per minute, not even come close to it, in fact. Well, I don't think it will. We're producing five per minute, so if, yeah, 30, 30 is, is what it'll ultimately do. Very good. Let's come over here now. And remove you. And we want stator left. Hook up power. And then make the connections. So here we just need to run out. Yeah, those are steel pipes coming out because that's one of the two inputs for the stators. And then you just need to run to there. Out in. Okay. And I believe that's it for the connections for the assemblers. Yeah, this is a separate input for the stators. Wait a second. No. So, yeah, this does need to be connected. And I said to use a Mark II here. Okay. Uh, here's a Mark II belt. That should be correct. Beautiful. Okay. Everything has power, so that's all looking good. Come down here and remove these poles. Oh, gotta hold down control. All of those should also have rails across the front too. Yeah, they do. I just added them so I didn't have to do it later. All right, moving right along here. Bring that back further. I'm just gonna set these down now so I don't have to mess with them later. Plus, <coughs> once I connect power to the machines themselves, you know that helps too, but this this keeps me afloat in the back. 
Let's remove this next section and let's go into our blueprint menu. And now we're okay. So we did the ones, which were the automated wires and the twos, which were the stators. Now we're working on the three pieces. Uh, these are going to be cable constructors. So I believe 3A is the one we want. So let's make that number one, uh, 3B number two, 3C number three. And we also have this little side piece that we only have to put on once. So I'm not going to put it on the hot bar. Okay, so 3A, six constructors making cable right end of the row with rails. That's the one we want. Okay. Um, that's perfect. It's exactly where it needs to go. Beautiful. Okay, let's grab a cable and connect that to here. And we also need to put our end caps on. Whoops, didn't mean to set that one yet. It won't let me set it directly there because of the insulator, so I have to lock it there and then nudge it over. Okay, all the machines lit up, so that means the power connections are all good. Uh, I need to put in caps all the way on that end too. I'll remember to do that at some point. Okay, so these guys are all making cable for the automated assemblers. Let's go ahead and do the next piece, which should be the left end. What is my description on that? That's 3B. Four constructors making cable left end of the row. Right. Okay. So it says we're missing iron plates. Let's grab some of those. Okay, that looks correct and looks like I or removed the right side upright beams from that already. So that means we don't have to do it right now. And everything's powered up. Okay. So this section here of 10 machines will feed cable into the first six assemblers making automated wiring. Um, and I thought, okay, hold on. Let me look at these again. 3C. What is 3C? Six constructors making cable right end of the group. Oh, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. That's going to be for the next group. The only difference between that and this is it doesn't have the rails. So, let's make our connections now. I think I'm going to Put a cable here. And we'll uh, cut that away. Well, actually, you know what? We've got to take this away anyway, so let's just cut the whole damn thing. Okay, so that that's going to be the start of that line. This needs to be a Mark three connection and this is where we need to use that special piece that I made um, we yeah we, sh we need to make a connection here too out mark three in mark three let's go over here oh 
Okay, so this is where we're going to feed the cable into the automated wiring. So if we go grab this side piece here, I believe this needs to line up with you. Um... Right, okay. Uh, do I have that? No, that needs to be rotated. Yeah, like this. Okay, I was going to say, that doesn't look right. It's because it wasn't turned the right way. I think it needs to go right there. Except for moved over. And... I believe that's correct. Okay. Of course, we do need to reset the belt. That was just there as a reference point for me to get it lined up correctly. Oh, shit. It was doing this to me before. I don't remember why it was doing that. It says the belt's too steep. Um, what did I do to make that work? Did I come out... Oh, there we go. No, 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 no. That's not right. That's not right. Try that again. I don't know why it does that. There's something I did to get it to work, and I don't remember what it was that I did. Did I just... Okay, what if we just do that? Whoops. Yeah, uh, that works. I mean... Oh. What the fuck? Why is that... This is actually up too high. Alright, let's remove these signs. I wonder if they're causing us trouble. They don't need to stay there now anyway. Okay, let's try this again. Flip you around this way. Move you to there. Why is it up too high? I don't get it. Hmm. I don't remember this happening when I... When I tested this. It's very bizarre. It's almost like it's... Connecting to... The machine up above instead of the bottom of the thing. But it's doing that whether I'm in default mode or blueprint mode. Yeah, let me put it back in blueprint mode again. Except for that. Okay, if I lock that in place, can I do this? And then this. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Okay. That was really weird. I, like I said, I don't remember that being a thing when I was testing this earlier. Now, is it still going to give me the belt that's too steep business? Let's see what it does. Yep. Okay, well then, we'll just do the same thing we did before. We'll bring this about halfway out. And now everything's level. Oh, 
Okay, um, this needs to be a Mark IV line, according to my notes here. And it doesn't line up correctly. I didn't like that. Let's go ahead and proceed then. So the next piece should be, once again, uh, the 3A cable constructor. Or no, this should be the 3C. Right into, right into the group. The only difference is it doesn't have the rails, which is fine. Um, we need it to go that way. And I didn't remove the uprights on this one. And they're all powered, okay? Now let's go here. And we want, once again, um, the left in 3B. Yep, that should be correct. Should be, we'll see. Let's go underneath. Start of mark. Okay. So this should. Yes. <clears throat> I am kind of concerned because I don't remember these being off, but. I guess it's I guess it's all right. We'll find out, and if it isn't, we'll fix it later, and then I'll have to fix the blueprint. Okay, so this is a Mark III connection, which means this is a Mark III connection, and these are the inputs for the second group. So over here, we use that same piece, this one here, side piece, and lock that in place, move it out, and once again it's too high. If I put it in blueprint mode, see, I don't even—I don't even know where the hell it's trying to connect now. That's just weird. Um, is that too high? Yeah, it's too high. Son of a bitch. Okay. Well, I guess that means then we're going to have to build this one out. Maybe when I when I tested this it wasn't um I didn't have anything up above it. Could be. Okay. So what that means then is let's remove this and grab that merger it's kind of hard to say for sure if that's the right spot for it I think it needs to come this way a little far out, but since we're manually doing this anyways, well, no, let's do it right, because otherwise it won't 
it won't work out correctly. Can I nudge that to there? Okay. That's... Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so we want to... Um, we want to mark three. So at least that connection works okay. We need a connection there, and we need a mark four connection. Coming out of here into there. But we have. Oh, god damn it. I gotta put this back in place. We gotta bring this out to here. And around to here. And into there. Okay. I guess that's good. Uh, while we're down here, we need to color all of this, these extra ones that we've added. What did I do? I want this one. There. So that way, you know, if I'm down here in the future looking around, I know everything that's yellow is belongs to the automated wiring connections. Right. I think that takes care of the cable machines. Um, what's that? Yeah, start of line. Yeah, that should take care of the cable machines. Very good. On this end, <coughs> I believe we're putting our steel pipe and foundry. Um, so let's go back to blueprints and we, yeah, we're, we're doing five, uh, no wait, four steel pipe constructors. Yeah, I th think those go on the end here. Let's have one set of steel pipe constructors. Yeah, I, I think they go here. <laughs> so... Tell you what, let's do. Um, can I? Can I put these in here? Oh, we're out of cable. All right, let's go get some cable. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put one of these in here, just temporarily. So we can put another one next to it. Um, like so. And then we can pull this one back out. So let's run a cable from here to here. And while I'm thinking about it, let's do the end caps over here. No, won't you? Okay. So all of you guys are making steel pipe. And your output, I think it's over here. Yeah, out to stator assemblers. That needs to be a mark too. Is that right? Yeah, okay. Then we'll do a nice little S curve going into there. So that'll feed the steel pipe into the stator machines. Uh, 
And this is the input for the copper cable, or just the cable, that will be feeding in there. Now, I think... I think what we put in here is this this one this 5a because I added the foundries to this particular one plus this produces wire for stator assemblers so we grab this guy and we stick him in there. So these didn't quite line up because, you know, different machines and all. But, you know, it is what it is. Let's grab you. This one back to here. We'll put the caps on these. Okay, so this piece here is producing steel ingots for the pipe machines over here, the steel pipe machines. These two pieces are producing catarium wire for these six stator machines up here. So, let's go ahead and remove some of these so we can get down here and get the connections hooked up. Let's hook up the steel ingots first. Alright, so we need a Mark III into here. See, that one, that one worked perfectly. So... That one's good. Okay, so that hooks up the steel ingots to the steel pipes. And then the caterium wire um, out to stator assemblers mark three. Okay, those are for the foundries. These are for the wire makers. So this must be the input, the Caterium inputs. Right. Yep. And then these are the outputs. I just wanted to make sure I was using, you know, the right thing, of course. Um, all right. So let's actually fill this back in. And we need to use Mark Three line. Okay. Let me go back to... There. And that'll send the wire out and into the stator machines. I believe I hooked that up correctly. We shall see. Okay, so let's do the same thing here. And we'll extend this down to there and then across the back. Let's remove the next section here. Um, okay, I, th <clears throat> excuse me, I think that I got away from, well, I, uh, what did I do here? I think I left an extra row in there and moved this back. Pretty sure we did that way. All right, so let's get rid of that. And those and put this back in place. That hole's got to come out later anyway. Let's look at our blueprints. So now we are on <clears throat> wire constructor for uh, right. This this one I replaced. No, this one I replaced with this one because the, the original one that I made. I didn't have the foundries with it, but I left it in there anyway. So, so we're actually now on six. 
Okay, so 6A should be six wire constructors for cable right end of the row with rails. That is correct. Okay, so um, because we are not lined up with our blueprints, again, we just need to put some temporary walls in to get this started, just like before. And nudge it over to there, and I think we're good. Put our caps on here. Everything's powered, so that looks good. Um, we'll just fill these in like that. Okay, so here we've got four regular speed machines and then two underclocked machines doing uh yeah 50 percent because um that's the number that we need to supply that first bank of cable makers over there okay let's remove those those reattach these and we also can get rid of these walls here so this needs to go to here go back to did I do that right? yeah I think so And then this one needs to go here. Whoa. We're in the drink. Uh, yeah, I think that's straight. So this is the over pillar version I was talking about that we are going to have to use that special one. Okay, so let's see. We want to go here, get rid of this and these. So we're not actually going to use... This was the original one that I built, but then I had to change it to this. So then we're not using this one at all. Uh, right, okay, so... Let's grab this one here and put it in place. Um, let's just set another temporary blueprint in here. Um, doesn't even really matter which one it is. Now we'll go to the over pillar version and we're missing steel beams. Of course we are. Okay, we'll remove those extra poles there. Get our power hooked up. Okay, so, <coughs> um, Let's do the hookups back here first. I don't th think I actually need to hook up anything over on this side. Uh, but we do need to do these hookups here because I couldn't include the mergers on these. So we have this piece here. I don't know if it's going to do the same weird shit that the other one did, but let's just try it. Um. Oh, actually this one comes with its own... Uh, foundations. So, how many foundations is that? It's th four. Okay, yeah, good. That'll actually help us put this in correctly then. Okay, let's get it on blueprint mode. 
Um, the only question here, let's do it from down below because I can't tell that's orient orientated correctly. Yep, yeah, that's oop, it, it. Yeah, that's acting weird. That's where I want it. Um, hold on, lock that. Yeah, that's that's right. That should be correct. Okay. Yeah, that was just a note to myself to reset the lifts. Which we will do right now. And those are Mark II lifts. There we go. And then we just need a Mark II belt there and we get that weird the belt is too steep bullshit again okay let's get rid of you I think that's good because this is the output for that wire, and that's the output for that wire. Okay, I want to go there, back to. And then this one comes all the way over here, I'm getting kind of close to Running out of juice here. Is that straight? Tis not. Needs to go to there. Okay. And these send the wire into uh, the cable machines. And I think that's everything, guys. All of our pieces we need for making our automated wiring. Okay, so the next step now is going to be to hook up the inputs. Let's go back up top side for a minute. What I think I want to do, I don't have to do this, but I want, I think I want to do this. I think I want to load up, preload up all of the machines before we send the material on to the next set of machines. And probably. The easiest way to do that is going to be by just disconnecting the belts rather than turning off a bunch of machines. All right, so let's disconnect these belts here so we can get the raw resources into the... Oh, no, no. I forgot to take this one back down. Yeah, we don't need this one. Here. I was going to I was going to say what the hell's going on here? Yeah, that one doesn't I just put that there temporarily so I could get the um, you know, that other blueprint in over the pillar. Okay, yeah. So let's disconnect those belts. So we can get these first set, you know, the first set of machines, the first stage I should say of machines primed. Um, and likewise, we want to do that for the pipe machines too. So that means we can just temporarily disconnect that belt. Right, because that was sending the wires and this one's sending the pipes. Okay. 
if we if we kind of start this up systematically, the whole system will will start producing more quickly than if I just hook it up now and let it balance itself out, which it will do eventually, but it just takes a long time. Um, all right, so let's add you in. So let's get our iron hooked up here first. Um, does that hook in correctly? I, th I think it does. Well, what do you know? It's almost as, it, almost as if I planned it that way. Okay. That gets the iron going into the foundries. Um, the coal... Okay, yeah, that one doesn't quite match up for us. So what we want to do here is grab some ceiling hangers. And I believe we want them to be here but back to. And over this line here. And then we want to go down three. I think that's what we want. Compliments of our our rail system. And that'll get the foundry started and we'll get them completely full of steel before we send them onto the pipes, which actually if that's what we're gonna do, we need to cut that line for a minute. Okay, beautiful. Oh shit, I'm in the water. Okay, so for the Caterium, we need to run that to three locations. The first one being here. So let's just bring that line up to here. Um, and then let's bring that out actually should we, we should be able to just do this right belt has an invalid shape I don't Things going into here. Yeah, no. Um, that's a that's output stuff. Okay, yeah. So we should be able to put that there, and then we're just gonna have to do an angled connection here. Uh oh. Wait a minute. Oh, right, I'm doing this from the wrong wrong place. And only, uh, that only needs to be a Mark 1, too, because that's only 30 per minute. Um, but shit, it's not going to... Oh, balls. Okay, so how do we make this look good? Uh, we could just turn this the other way, like I thought it was in the first place, actually. Right? Okay, yeah, let's do that. So we actually want the input to be there. So that means we need to reconnect this. And then we can do what we started to do. Let's get rid of you. was to bring you out to here and go to there. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to have to angle this one. There's nothing for it. But if I come back to there, can we get that angle? Yes. Good. Okay. So that'll bring Caterium wire, or I'm sorry, ingots into what the frick is this? 
That's um, a boo-boo on <laughs> my part. Okay. Um, all right. Why are those ingots not flowing? Let's reconnect this again. I guess that belt was just bugged or something. Okay, good. So the wire started up. Now, we need to come back over here and got to be careful not to lose my power. All right, let's do this. Uh, oh, I guess we have power poles right there. We should be okay. Uh, we got a dead spot right there. <clears throat> so our first input is right here. That's a Mark II input. And then our second one should be over here. Right, okay. So I think what I'm gonna do is grab Mark II come out to here and then just run the line this way There's a dead spot right up above us here. Okay. That is straight, right? No, it's not. I fucked it up. Um, this needs to come out to, uh, to there. That's straight. Okay, so likewise. That should be nice and straight. Very good. Okay. Now, what we want to do here is put a splitter on this line and it looks like it's I, uh, yeah I think that lined up correctly except for that needs to be yeah that is a mark two and this can actually be downgraded then to a mark one because that only needs 30 per minute Okay. Um I don't remember if this line needs to be two or three. Let's let's fight, figure that one out real quick. We need fifteen. 30, 60, uh, plus 15 is 75. Yeah, so Mark II is fine. Well, no, no, it isn't because we need 75 on both sides, so we need 150 in total. 
So that means at least this section here has got to be a mark th three. Yeah. Okay. Let's get the splitter in place first, though. Okay, it looks like that lined up correctly. Mark two into here. And then this section here needs to be mark three. And then everything after that can stay mark two. Now, the same thing here, though. Um, I don't like long angular lines. See if we can get away with that angle. Uh, no. Too steep. Okay, let's go back one. There, I like that better. Okay, so this is Mark Three because it's bringing. It needs a total of 150, but then when it stops here, then it's dropping half of that off, 75, and then a Mark II should be able to handle the rest of this with no issues. Okay. I think we have all of our input resources hooked up. Um, now, we just basically want to wait until these machines fill up. I mean, again, I don't have to but I'm going to. So I will bring you guys back when everything's full and ready to move on to the next stage. All right, guys, the machines are uh, fully saturated. So let's hop down here and hook up the next stage. Uh, let's see, we want you to go into here. And there goes the wire. And you go into here. Is that built straight? Yeah, I guess it is. Okay. Let's do the same thing over here. Wires moving through. That's beautiful. Okay, then we'll come over here and connect the wire coming out of here and in, back into here and connect the steel coming out of here into here. Oh, actually, you know what? That's right. Well, actually, well, it's okay. This is going to fill the stators up now, but they won't they still won't be able to start until they get the steel, so we'll be fine. Okay. So now the pipes, yeah, now the pipes are starting, okay? Good. We'll let them get filled up. So these are already getting their wire, but again, not a problem. And then you cable machines should all be started up getting your wire to make cable and I see green lights on everything so I think we're in good shape okay I'll bring you back once again when all of these machines are saturated and ready to load up the final stage here on the assemblers while we're waiting for that let's check our next um, set of alternate recipes Alternate automated miner. What does the normal recipe do on this? One and a half per minute plates and rods. 
one per minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Look at that again. Oh, because, okay, so you can only make this by hand, these by hand in the equipment workshop. Whereas if you wanted to automate them in a manufacturer, you would do it this way. Why the hell would you need to automate these? I mean, you don't need that many of them, do you? Are they also... Well, I guess they're used for... Other things, too. So I suppose that could be useful. Um, Alright, let's come back to that. The heat sink recipe. This is 10 per minute. And it takes rubber and aluminum casing. What's the default recipe? takes aluminum sheets and copper at seven and a half per minute. Uh, okay. So this is 10 per minute, but it requires rubber, which means you have to set up a refinery and you have to deal with byproduct, whereas you don't have to with the other one for 25% more. Hmm. I mean, that could be a good deal if you already have rubber in the mix somewhere else. Excess rubber, of course. So, but it's only two and a half more per minute. Uh, I, I don't know. I kind of like the idea of being able to do this. Let's say that. Well, I'm assuming the Mark III minor machines are going to require at least three of these little buggers anyways. So we could just make a bunch of them up and have them ready to go. I think the drones will require these too. I, I don't think this is terrible though, but I don't know. I'm, I'm inclined to go with this one. The other, On the other hand though, I mean... To make these by hand is not a big deal. I mean, you can make them really fast. Yeah, let's go with this one. Let's go with this one. Okay. Okay, guys, the cable machines are saturated, so let's get those starting to feed cable into our automated wire assemblers. Our connections, I believe, are down here. There we go. Really? You're going to do that to me again? Whatever. <laughs> Whatever it takes, man. Okay. Now, let's go take a look at our, our pipe. That's going to be the next thing to hook up. Yeah, these machines are saturated. That one's close enough. This one's underclocked. I'll show you guys all the math on this too, by the way. I know I didn't actually do that. Okay, let's go ahead and hook the pipes up. I think we're good enough to get those going. I don't know. I don't know why this is happening. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Uh, okay. Then we'll do the same thing. We'll just bring it to here. If you guys know why that's happening in the comments, let me know. I'm curious because it baffles me. Okay, so that'll get the stator machines going with the pipe. And I want, I want them to also saturate before we start sending them along into automated wiring. So that's really the last connection that we need to make. And these guys should be filling up with cable. Yes, they are. They'll fill up with cable quickly. Because we're moving a lot of cable. Uh, all right. So why are you not moving cable out? Something's not hooked up right here. Let's take a look at it. Oh, I know why. 
Because I didn't hook up. I didn't hook this up. Yeah. Okay, so this is an output here. And I didn't say it needed to be Mark 2 or 3. So that means it should be fine with just a Mark 1. There we go. And the reason for that is because this outputs 30, this adds 30 to output 60. So this connection here only needs to be Mark 1. And then once it gets to there, then we get to 90, so we should be on Mark 2, which we are. Okay. So I just forgot to connect those, those belts. So theoretically, we should have green lights on everything back here. Uh, you guys are yellow. That's because... Yeah, it, it kicked back in. The, these are going to start and stop a little bit just because I let them, you know, fill up first. But once this whole system is up and running, assuming I did the math correctly, and I know that's a big-ass assumption, everything should just run smoothly at 100%. Okay, so you're getting pipe. This machine will be the last one to fill up with pipe, though, just because, uh, you know, it comes in here. So as soon as this one gets to, you know, to 200, you know, then this one will start climbing to 200. When that one gets to 200, this one will start climbing to 200 and on down the line. Because this is a manifold setup, so that's how it works. I, I suppose I could speed this part along by just putting this extra pipe in the machines um i might i might fudge a little bit and do that here in a while but i want to let it run for a little longer first okay why are you still are you just backed up or are you is the spice still not flowing for you guys what the hell's going on here they were showing green earlier weren't they Okay, let's go back down there for a minute. Yeah, they're definitely sending cable out. I think it's just I think it's just jammed up right now. Oh, you know why? Because it's already filled up all of the assemblers. Yeah, these guys are all full of, of cable. Okay, that makes sense. Because everything's jammed up, pretty much. Right. Okay, we're good. No problems there. Okay, so this one's full. This one should start filling up more quickly. The, the rest of these will kind of start and stop until it's their turn to fill up, if that makes sense. And then once they're full, we connect to the stator belt and then the staters will start to fill up these machines. And once they're full, then everything should be up and running perfectly. Since I know, though, that this already works, because I've tested it with these blueprints, and we didn't, we didn't really have to change any of the blueprints, did we? I had to do a couple of tweaks for things down below, but the blueprints have all pretty much worked. Um, I think I might artificially help this along. Um, yeah, so let's let's just fill these up with pipe to move it along more quickly. Okay, so last step here then is to hook up the stators to the automated wiring machines. Here we go. 
And these are all on Mark 1, so it's going to it's gonna take a little bit longer for everything to kick in here. Now, one thing we could do with these guys is we could actually turn off all of the machines. until we get to the very end machine and we let that one fill up and then we just progressively turn them back on as each one fills up whether I don't know that this really gains us anything in the long run in terms of time um, So it probably doesn't. Maybe it does. I don't know. But I'm just, you know, essentially I'm just controlling the fill up of each machine. Oh, okay. We just go. Oh, shit. Why don't you have cable? Uh oh. There must be something wrong with the lift on that. Let me check these other ones real quick, and then we'll go look at that lift. It's us The lifts are usually the culprit I have found. Either it doesn't connect properly, as in the case of that one probably, or you use a Mark 1 when you should have used a Mark 2, etc. Yeah, I think there's probably something bugged with the lift on this one. So that would be this lift here. There we go. Okay, yeah, so we just had a buggy lift. Which is something that I should fix in the blueprint. And it was... This lift here, which needed to be reset. There, okay. Save that, and we're good. Okay. Okay, do the stairs go, I think, do they go up to 100 or 200? I can't remember. I think they must go to 100. Okay, so let's start this machine. And let that one start filling up. Okay, so, um, let's go over the math of all of this. So each automated wiring machine needs uh, two and a half stators per minute. We'll just look at the stators. So I have 12 of these. So 12 times 2.5 is 30. Okay. If we go over to the stator machines, we have a total of six of those. They're each producing five per minute. Five times six is 30. And that's our number there for stators. Okay. For cable, each machine is taking in 50 cable per minute. We have 12 machines times 50 is 600 cable. Over here we have 10 machines, each producing 30 cable per minute. Right? And same thing over here, 10 machines producing 30 per minute. So that's a total of 600 cable feeding into the 12 automated wire assemblers. Okay, we can turn this next one on. Okay, so the cable machines themselves then require 60 wire per minute. There are a total of uh, 20 of these machines. Therefore, they need 1,200 wire per minute. Over here, we've got four machines at 
uh, producing 120, which is 500 wire, and then two machines that are underclocked to 50%. Um, adding an another, wait a minute, nope, sorry, I didn't do that right. Four at 120 is 480, right. And then another 120 on top of that comes to 600. So this one's doing 600, and this one's doing 600 to provide the 1200 wire to make all the cable. Yeah, these guys should be underclocked. Over here, we have our pipe machines. They require 30 steel ingot per minute. We have four running at normal speed, so that's 120, and then we have one underclocked with another 15, uh, sorry, with another 10, uh, producing a total of 90 per minute. And that's because we have six of these machines requiring 15 pipe per minute. 15 times six is 90. So that's where the pipe's coming from. Um, these guys, therefore, are producing a total of 45 times three, which is 135 steel ingots per minute. You need 30, 60, 90, 120 plus 15 more is 135. These two guys are producing 240 wire per minute for the stators, stator machines. We need 40, we have six times 40 is 240. And that's the math. Okay. Let's see how we're doing over here. Right, you're full. Let's go ahead and turn this one on. Okay, guys. Well, I'm just going to sit here and uh, watch this until, <clears throat> excuse me, all of the rest of the assemblers, you know, fill up with stators, and then we should be up and running at full capacity. But I think I'm going to go ahead and let you all go here because it's late. i got to go to bed. I'm really tired. And uh, like I said, once this is all up and running at 100% capacity, I'm just going to turn it off. And then um, I can turn it on again in the next episode just briefly to show you that it's all running smooth. But I'm not going to just keep running it because otherwise these automated wiring things are going to pile up. Well, you know what I could do? I'm, not, I'm being stupid. I should just throw those into a sink. Yeah, duh. <laughs> Should just throw those into a sink because, you know, it'll get us points. Not that we really need sink points anymore. I think I bought just about everything. Um, except for some of the, you know, really expensive in-game things. And we can also actually, you know, we get enough coupons going. We can actually use those to buy some parts too, which might make sense in some cases. Let's leave that there. I don't know why the hell I didn't just think about putting a sink down here, but I didn't, so... Um, yeah, let's do that. I have 92 coupons in here. And I don't I have some in storage too, I just don't remember. But yeah, we'll just sync these, because why the hell not? It's working on getting full. It'll, it'll, it'll obviously take longer and longer for them to fill up as we go back down the line because, you know, these are also consuming staters as we go. But anyway, I'm going to let you guys go here. Um, my tentative plan for the next episode is to get uh, nitrogen mining set up and drones. And what we're going to do is way up on the plateau there where we have nitrogen... Um, it's going to be up here on one of these plateaus here. Uh, oh, actually, I guess it's right there because we, we have a tower. Uh, I'm going to build a facility up there with a blender um, that's going to make the... Uh, hold on. What are they called? The fuse modular frames. 
I'm going to ship via drone the heavy modulars and the aluminum casings up to the top and then have a blender make the fuse modular frames and have the drones ship those back to us down here at the factory. We need a total of 50 of these in order to do the milestone and then of course we're going to need more, uh, probably many more of those for other things later on. So that is the plan. And um, yeah, so it should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to, to working with drones for the first time. With that being said, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share out the video. And we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.